for this one, I wanted to play with some masking and blocking out heart shapes so that I could preserve part of my textured watercolor paper while still adding a little something else on top of it. So I'm cutting out heart stencils or heart masking shapes using cardstock paper. There's two ways you can do this. I didn't want to fold it and cut the heart because I wanted it to lay flat. So you can just go for it like I did in the first one or you can cut out kind of a guitar pick shape using the corner of your cardstock and then start sculpting in the two bumps for the top of the heart. So now I'm just fine tuning my shapes, getting them to the heart size that I want to, cleaning up my space. And then I'm gonna use washi tape to tape these down onto the surface of my textured watercolor paper. I use washi tape for a lot of different things. I use it to tape down my watercolor and mixed media papers when I'm gonna be doing very wet watercolor application. It also works great for taping down masking when you want to preserve what the surface is already doing underneath on your art paper. So a couple of pieces of washi tape help secure these two hearts to my rubbing, haul, rubbing alcohol textured watercolor paper. And then once I've decided how I want those to go, I decided to trim down my watercolor paper. So I'm cutting off the border. This is an extra sheet from a larger one that I had made, so it was already partially cut down. So I just decided to redefine the page size and the composition now that I knew how large my hearts were gonna be. And then I'm getting out some craft black acrylic paint. This is just, you know, whatever the most inexpensive black acrylic paint is you can find at your art supply store, and an acrylic brush. And now I'm just brushing out from the inner part of my heart mask toward the outside to give kind of sort of a spray paint vibe to it. Like a kind of if you were spray painting something on the surf and it was on a protective surface or even you know the ground and then you removed the object that you were intending to paint, you would have this kind of ghost spray out color. So I'm going for the ghost spray out color. That's really what I want. And to get the acrylic paint to kind of go out like that, I am putting some on my brush and kind of wiping it back off on my disposable palette so that I don't have a ton of black paint going down on the paper because I do want it to be sort of ghosty. I don't want to obscure the textured paper underneath. I want to still be able to see those really beautiful pinks, but I want to definitely add a grayness to it by the you know, see-through textured black acrylic application. So I'm just going around each of the hearts, kind of going in a radial sort of manner so that they, you know, blooms out from the heart shape and will hopefully create a really cool stenciled heart left on the page when I remove my masking shapes. I did have a couple areas where the acrylic paint went down a little thicker than in, so I think I would have in the end chosen to do a rougher acrylic brush potentially, like a, a coarser bristle. But for an experiment and kind of trying this technique out, I still really enjoyed how it looked. And I just had to work a little bit harder to get the black to kind of fade out as I was applying the acrylic paint to my paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the heart masking shapes so that I can see what I've preserved underneath. And I love it, the, the hearts pop, the masks worked, they created a crisp outline, and this is a super fun thing. I could see using this to create cards. Now, I wanted to do this technique again, but I wanted to play with my textured ink paper, and now I'm positioning those onto my ink textured paper, doing a little bit of a different sort of composition, and I'm getting out some magenta Liquitex acrylic, I wanted a bolder body paint, something that's a little more, um, had a thicker viscosity so that it could kind of hold up. And I've got a piece of cardboard and I'm gonna do the, the same idea of the radial effect, but this time I want to have the lines be crisper. So I've been playing a lot with texture and cardboard and this is a really great way for me to be able to get another effect uh, similar to the one before. So we're still masking, we're still, you know, kind of preserving areas of the textured paper with the heart. But by using a thicker paint and mixing in the pink with the white, I get some value variation in my paint application. And by using the cardboard on its edge, I get some really nice radial lines that are a little more defined than the flat edge of my paintbrush in my previous art technique. So now I'm going on to my second heart. 
I really made sure that I didn't mix up my white and my pink too much. I wanted the colors to be separate, um, you know, like a half mixed thing so that I would get more variation as I dragged the lines out from the center of the heart. I do recommend if you try doing textured work with cardboard, the more you use it, the more it's going to break down. So I did have to keep turning my cardboard piece so that I still had a crisp enough edge because the very edge of my cardboard where I started started getting wet from the paint and started bending in a little bit. Those new textures can be very cool, but it wasn't what I was going for for this one. So I probably in the future would have had an extra couple of scraps of cardboard on hand so that I could easily swap in a new crisp one to really get some of those sharp edges going out from the center of my hearts. And then I'm just going around making sure that I've got enough of the light in there to break up and define the line work so it didn't get muddled. I'm not gonna wait for this to dry. I'm gonna go for it and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove my heart and reveal it. So very similar to the previous one, but a whole different look. So I really hope you enjoyed checking out this technique. If you try it, let me know. If you have other ideas for how to use it, I would love to hear them. And be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to follow along on the 14 days of art inspiration. And I'll see you next time.